What's going on everybody and welcome to part three of the JavaScript basics tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be doing is animating our blobs on the canvas itself. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, we'll just comment these out here. Um, actually we're just going to comment all three of them. Uh, and the next thing I want to do is basically the way that we're going to animate something on the canvas is using a built-in called set interval. And set interval is going to take two parameters. That's going to be the function that you actually want to run, and then the milliseconds between each time you want to run it. So in our case, uh, we want to run the blob function. So we would just run, you know, blob. And we would want to run that every 100 milliseconds, but we want it to move. So right now, blob is going to stay in place. So, um, so for example, we might, you know, we would take this, paste that in, but that's not going to move. It's going to, it'll keep intervaling. <laughs> that's a word, uh, but it's going to stay in the same location. So we actually want to update that location. So the way that we're going to do that is first, we're going to need to set two new values. So we're going to say let x and we'll start that at 50 and then we'll say let y, whoops, typo. Uh, we'll start that as well at 50. So let, because we wanna actually change the value here, like we don't want that to be constant. So once we've done that, the next thing that we might think is we would come down here and we would say um, x plus plus and then y plus plus and for the life of me i can't remember if we've talked about plus plus so i'm going to talk about it again plus plus is identical to saying like plus equals uh one and if we say x plus plus or x plus uh plus equals one that's identical to saying x equals x plus one sorry if i've repeated that twice um because I've also written it in the text base, so I can't remember if I've covered that or not. That's like one of those things that I've covered like a million times in Python too, and I, I just forget about it. But anyways, that's what that's all that's happening. So every time that runs, it's just gonna add one to x. So now after this function runs, it's 51. And then after y, run, <clears throat> y runs, or after this function one runs, and we get to this line, y, we, we add one to y. So now what we want to do is just run this function a bunch of times. So rather than being, oh, we have one more thing we need to do. So because we're calling this x and this x and this y and this y, we actually are kind of replacing x and y locally inside of this function because we're using them as parameters. So I actually want to change this to be x loc x loc. So we're still passing x and y into here, so we will need to change this to x and y. Not t, but y. Um, but then locally, rather than referring to x and y as um, x and y, we actually just wanna refer to them as x loc, because actually all we're doing is referring to the value. We're not actually passing the object into there, okay? So when we pass x and y, like if we left this as x and y, we actually would have changed our namespace a little bit. These x, x's and y's, these, these variables? <laughs> anyway, they would not be uh, modifiable anymore. So we need to change these because these are actually just temporarily used to take in the parameters that we pass in here. So we're gonna change this to x loc and this to y loc. But then down here, when we say x plus plus and y plus plus, we're not referring to the x and y that was passed here. because all we passed really was the value. When we say this down here, we're modifying these up here, these variables here. So, okay, cool. <clears throat> so we think we're ready. We set the interval. We're ready to run this thing. So we save that and run it in the browser and what the heck, nothing's happening. So then I start wondering like, um, is set interval working or is blob, like which one is not working? Did I do set interval wrong or did I do blob wrong, right? Because I'm kind of in the dark here. Like with Python, I'm kind of to the point where I pretty much know and expect how things work. But with JavaScript, there's all these like new little intricacies that 
are just unfamiliar to me. I've never ran into the issues like this, you know? So I'm try I have to learn all these things all over again. So uh, hopefully you're enjoying learning them with me. <laughs> so, so the first thing I would do when this is not happening the way I expect is like, okay, well, let's forget about setting the interval. <clears throat> because we expect set interval to run the blob um, function a handful of times, right? So let's just run the blob function a handful of times, right? So that's what step one to test this bad boy. And you should be able to see it, but you could also see in yours, it clearly moved, right? It, it, it didn't get rid of the original blobs, but that's okay. It's, it's helpful to us because we can literally see that it, it moved. So what gives? What's, what's the problem? Um, so basically, uh, I had to search set interval and figure out what was going on and like read a bunch of posts and stuff. And what happens is when you send in um, a function with parameters, the parameters become local to the set interval. <laughs> it, so it becomes local to the timer function itself. So, so now you're like, well, that's screwed up because well first of all I don't I'm not sure why that's happening I think that's kind of lame because how like this is so much cleaner than what we're gonna have to do but the workaround is to just make a th I'm gonna call it a throwaway function I don't know if there's a particular name for these in JavaScript but it's a throwaway function literally rather than sending in blob I'm going to send in um, a f just function empty parms and I'm just going to create the function inside of here. <laughs> and I think that's the only way around it. <laughs> I don't know. There's, there might be something better. And if you know a better way, please feel free to leave, uh, leave it below. Um, so anyways, so now what we might think is, well, well, we still can't just like sending in blob here is not going to make any difference. So if we send in blob here uh, and do this, um, we can test it but I don't believe that will change anything for us. Right, so it's still not working because it's actually just gonna draw a blob in the same location every single time. Oh, well, <laughs> definitely. Let's at least get it somewhere, right? I just already knew it was gonna fail. Oh no, it's actually working. What the heck? <laughs> I really thought that if you passed uh, this in here, you would have to modify these outside, but I guess not. See, isn't that screwy? I don't like that. <laughs> anyway, um, I was pretty sure what we were going to wind up needing to do is remove X and Y here and put them in here like that, which if this doesn't achieve the same result when I run it, I quit. <laughs> oh, thank God. Okay, so, <laughs> so anyway, that works as well. And I was pretty sure that was how we were going to have to do it. We were going to have to take these values out um, of the function. But I guess that doesn't really make any sense because... To JavaScript, it's just running, it just gets to this function. It's like, okay, we got to run this stuff now. So actually, we can leave those right in there. And I guess that makes sense. I guess. Hashtag JavaScript. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, all right, so that was fun. Uh, like I said, I'm a JavaScript noob. So we have a couple of other issues. Um, the most egregious issue that I think we can solve right away is now that we have done our debugging, like this is not how we intend the blobs. Um, you know, we don't want them sliding across like a piece of chalk. Instead, what we want is a new one, like to be cleared every single time. So the op we have a few options. <clears throat> uh, the, probably the most reasonable choice is to just clear the rectangle every time so or just basically clear the entire canvas and we do that with clear rect now later you can clear like specific areas and even clear rect allows us to clear really specific areas but because we're going to draw a lot of stuff to the screen anyways i'm just going to clear the whole thing every single time and if we start having performance issues for a reason by doing that then we can start to address, well, how, you know, will individual smaller clears actually save us any time, first of all, and then how might we do that? But for now, we're just going to wipe the entire slate clean and then redraw. And to the user that's viewing, it'll happen so fast, they won't even know what happened. So, so what we wanted to say is context.clearrect. Uh, and here is where we pass, basically, you know, you're going to pass two coordinates. You're going to pass the... 
<clears throat> the starting coordinate and then the ending coordinate, and it basically just makes a rectangle to that size. So the start is just zero, zero, and then all the way to canvas dot uh, width, and then canvas, canvas dot height, and, um, and that's it. We're gonna just clear all of that away. So we save that, run that, and as you can see, we've got this beautiful blob now just simply moving on its way. And it looks a little jittery still, but that's probably actually more so because of this. Like we could probably, like we're up, it's basically running at 10 frames a second. Okay, so, so we could drop that a little bit and then hopefully that would be a little, well, it's not quite smooth. I'm also on a VPS, so <laughs> this, this may never look good. Uh, but ju I'm just, now I'm, now I'm just curious. The video is pretty much over. You're free to get the heck out of here if you want, but I just kind of want to, so rather than, so one cool thing about the canvas is you can do things in decimals. So rather than moving an entire one, we can actually move 0.2. So I'm just going to do that. I'm just, I'm just going to try. I'm just going to try. I'm just curious. Yeah, it's still a little jittery. It's probably because I'm on a, uh, VPS though. So what's the next issue that's our problem? Well, the problem is, the next major issue is that our blob just simply has no idea about boundaries. Uh, it just, shoop, off the screen. So in the next tutorial, what we're gonna be talking about is uh, conditionals. So how can we keep the blob on the screen and effectively just kind of have it bouncing around um, on the screen? So that's what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial quick shout out to my uh channel members who've been here for over six months that's a long time we got alexis wong bing lee metanoia reginald roberts and louise thank you guys very much for your support you guys are amazing people uh okay that's it i'll see you guys in the next video